You're watching YVTV Channel 7, Yakin Valley Local Television. Yadkin Valley Telephone Membership Corporation is a member-owned company and we were established in 1950 to serve Yadkin, Davie, the northern part of Iredell County and we also serve a little bit of Wilkes, Alexander and Rowan. We provide our landline telephone to those areas and have for many years and in the late 1990s we established two subsidiary companies. One of those is the Data Center Incorporated and the other is Yadkin Valley Telecom. We also with our subsidiary company can offer quadruple play to our customers. That means that we can offer AT&T wireless, we can offer IPTV video, internet, and landline. Hi, I'm Lisa Freeman, Sales and Marketing Manager of the Yadtail Group, and I'd like to talk to you today about Trailers of the East Coast. We're currently featuring local businesses in our Real Connection newsletter. Trailers of the East Coast has been a business with us since 2002 when they called us and were quite unhappy with their telephone service. Since our fiber to the home rollout, they've been able to take more advantage of our higher internet speeds for their businesses and have said what a great partnership this is. Trailers of the East Coast provides graphics and logos for our vans and our vehicles, and we have certainly enjoyed the service they've provided. We hope you'll enjoy this spot. We look forward to doing more in the future. Welcome to Trailers of the East Coast. How may I help you? We are very proud of our relationship that we have with Yadtail. Uh, we have been with their services for the past six or seven years. And since our change with them, it has really uh, upped our value of their services and so forth. It has, has enabled us to, to grow and uh, we find our partnership with them to be very important. And we're also proud of the fact that, uh, you know, we have a vinyl uh, department here and we have done uh, help with their design on their new Yadtail wraps that they did on their vehicles or service vehicles and uh, turned out very good but they're great people and we're very proud to be a partnership with them. My parents moved here when I was actually I was about two weeks old we moved here from the Men Hill area close to Charlotte North Carolina and he sold he had a dairy farm that he and my uh, mom ran, did ran the dairy farm and they sold that and uh, they bought a furniture hardware store. It was a combination store back in the day. It was 1945 and, uh, and ran it. And I grew up as a child, uh, you know, being with him in there, having, uh, watching him deal with the public. Uh, of course, it was a great place to grow up as a child, putting up inventory, uh, assembling things and putting things together. My dad called me one night. And, I was in college and wanted to know if I had an interest in buying a feed mill. And I said, well, sure, anything you know pertaining to animals and livestock, I definitely had interest in. So came home that weekend and he and I went and visited with the previous owner and uh, the employees there and they all agreed if we purchased it, uh, they would continue to work for us. And so long story short, we did and knew nothing about the feed industry, but uh, uh, it was a wonderful experience, uh, you know, uh, my wife and I were married and had young children come along, so for 20 years we uh, ran the feed business, which uh, back in those days, Davy County was uh, very agricultural. There was over a hundred grade A dairy farms in the county, so that was our big bread and butter was supplying the dairy farms with, uh, with feed and so forth. But as time went on, agriculture got uh, depressed and, and things were difficult. The farmers were struggling, uh, paying their accounts and so forth. And I told uh, my wife, Kathy, I said, honey, we've just got to do something different. I can see the handwriting on the wall here that uh, uh, things do not look good. And uh, 
having the love for horses again, you know, I thought about horse trotters. So we started supplementing our feed business in 1985 with the horse trailers and uh, anyway started out with four low-end inexpensive horse trailers and uh, started selling about one a month and uh, and I thought wow you know uh, wonder what would happen if I got uh, if I got eight trailers you know so I upped the inventory to eight and uh, I sold two that month so uh, that was sort of a scenario I never forgot and so we just kept building and then eventually phased out the feed side of it. Looking back on those days, my, my desk was right in front of a, a window that I could look out and see the, my inventory out front and I would sit up in my chair and look out at my inventory and sort of do a rough count of the trailers and I had counts payable on a nail on the wall hanging right here and I'd thumb through the counts payable and look at my check balance, my checkbook, and see what it was, and I think, hey, I'm okay, I'm doing all right. Uh, much simpler days back then than, than today, but uh, my older son, Will, uh, along then graduated uh, state college, and uh, he started to work for me, with us, and uh, joined the, the family business, and uh, uh, we continued to grow, and uh, later, a lot, Clint came along, of course, uh, Clint loves the story. He graduated uh, state as well with an engineering degree and uh, his first job out of college, uh, he didn't particularly enjoy it. And I told him, I said, well, Clint, come work for your brother and I. I know it's probably uh, degrading for you to work in the trailer business with an engineering degree, but uh, uh, why don't you help us out till something better comes along? Of course, uh, he's still with us and uh, Anyway, but I'm very proud of, uh, of the two boys and uh, they're, they're different. They bring uh, so much value in, in different ways to our company. We uh, continue to grow, especially when the boys come along and as we uh, uh, grew, we diversified into utility trailers and also uh, we got into the NASCAR world. Uh, I uh, kept sharing with uh, Featherlight Manufacturing uh, about the opportunity in our part of the world here. Not only uh, were we strong with horses and, and uh, livestock, but also the racing NASCAR world was here. And uh, so we arranged a meeting with uh, Richard Childers and uh, the owner of Featherlight flew down and uh, we had a meeting with uh, Richard and uh, uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr. was involved in the deal and we put a, de a deal together with uh, those guys that uh, uh, we would uh, supply them a trailer if they would help us get into the NASCAR world and uh, uh, we're very proud of the fact of our relationship with uh, RCR Racing and and the relationship that we had with uh, Dale Sr. was uh, in those early days in the early 90s was uh, quite a, a benefit to us opening the doors and getting into that market. In I guess it was probably 1995, uh, the owner of Featherlight uh, was in Daytona working the race down there <coughs> for Daytona in February. and told me that uh, if I would go back home and build a, a new facility out on the interstate that he would uh, have interest in leasing a service center that would uh, and me build a retail store beside of it and uh, so I was very excited and got back home um, went to my good friend uh, Terry Brawley who is now head of economic development here but got with Terry, he was a town manager at the time, and I said, Terry, where's there some land available uh, on the interstate? And right off, he uh, knew of this track of land out here. And uh, <clears throat> we started looking at it. It was a dirt road, weeds were waist high. I would come out in the afternoons and uh, out here in my truck, and I would drive in the middle of this field, and it just seemed so remote being out here, I'm thinking, I don't know, this seems like it's just out in the middle of nowhere. But I kept hearing the interstate traffic zooming by and I thought this is the place for us. I went to a lot of car dealerships and, uh, and looked at their models of how they had done it because deep down 
I had a I had a, a very strong fear that I maybe could not make it. Uh, I was spending a lot of money out here, and I'm thinking if worse come to worse and I don't make it, I certainly want to have some very sellable buildings. And I'm thinking, well, this would make a good car dealership. Maybe I could market those to someone if I don't make it. I would like to uh, introduce you to my wife, Kathy Junker, who uh, very proud of, and uh, she is a huge part of our business here. She is the, the glue that holds it all together, and uh, we just uh, couldn't have accomplished anything without this lovely lady here. I'm very proud of the fact that Kathy and I will have been married uh, 50 years uh, this coming December. When we moved out here, started the move out here on the interstate, Bill told me to hang on to his shirt tail that we were going for a ride. And there's been a couple of times I wanted to get off, <laughs> but I stayed. And, and it's been a good ride because he's a person that's always fun and interesting, never a dull moment. I trust his decisions. And I think that's what has made it work more than anything. If he made a mistake, he picked himself up and never looked back. And he learned from that mistake. And I think that's what has made him successful. He also never takes no for an answer if he believes in something. And if he truly thinks it's what he needs to do. So he has a lot of guts and ambition and persistence. One of Yadtel's most effective sales and marketing tools is its four store locations. Staffed with sales and customer service specialists, these stores display the newest products and also information introducing new services that are available. You're watching YVTV Channel 7, Yakin Valley Local Television. My name is Will Junker and I'm one of the co-owners at Trailers of the East Coast. And I've been involved here in the business basically all my life. Uh, growing up, as I was a young kid, um, I kind of hung out at the feed mill and started working part-time and of course eventually we started getting into the trailer business and that's when I was a teenager so I basically started out cleaning trailers um, if we traded for one um, I would do a little work in the shop then eventually got involved in sales and um, I've been a full-time employee here at Trailers of the East Coast since 87. We're a multi-line dealership we sell anywhere from a little 5 by 10 open utility trailer you know, all the way up to a big, you know, 19, 20 foot LQ horse trailer. Um, most of your, tip, your typical trailer dealership will maybe just sell one line of trailers, maybe horse trailers, maybe just cargo trailers, maybe the open utility trailers. Whereas here at Trailers of the East Coast, you know, we sell the utility trailers, cargo trailers, concession trailers, um, horse and stock trailers, a few motor homes, um, and a interesting story back at our old place you know we would stock you know maybe 75 to 80 trailers at the most and whenever we moved here to our new location off of 40 you know we brought our 70 80 trailers here and put them on the front lot and of course it basically looked like we didn't have much of anything in inventory so you know we saw right quick that we needed to order up our inventory so we do have a large selection of trailers to choose from it's one thing that uh, most people are surprised at whenever they pull in new and used. Most other trailer dealerships that you go to, you might would have to special order that red 7x14 trailer, whereas here at Trailers of the East Coast, it's, um, it's very odd for us not to have that trailer in stock that, that a customer might be looking for. Horse trailer sales are a big part of our business. I would say it would account for probably 60% of our sales. and. In a horse stock trailer, you know, we inventory anything from a little 12-foot tag-along steel stock trailer all the way up to a, you know, 21-foot LQ all-aluminum horse trailer that would have a full-blown living quarters, you know, with the RV-style generator, 
with the satellite dish, accordion countertops, tile floor, I mean basically anything that you would see in a upper end motor home, you know, we could also have inside of a horse trailer. A big part of our business here is used trailers. We've gotten real aggressive in the last three to four years going to a lot of repo auctions. Uh, we advertise now that we will buy your trailer from you. Um, so of course nowadays uh, we do get a lot of people in here more so looking for used trailers than we do the new and that's, that's a big part of our business. Something new to our business here, we have recently started renting out trailers. Uh, we have uh, six enclosed cargo trailers and then we have enclosed, we have an 8 by 20 and a 24 foot enclosed car trailer and then we also have a two horse bumper pull trailer that we rent out by the day, weekly and also monthly. But that's uh, something that new that we just recently offered that really draws a lot of traffic in here to our company for our parts and other parts of our business here. We offer vehicle wraps, trailer wraps, um, of course anything that we sell here we wrap but also we do you know, we offer graphics for fleets, special pricing for fleets. Um, and we did invest, we've always offered graphics. The gentleman that runs our graphics department is Trevor Walderman. He's been here with our company for 15 years. But in 2008, we invested in a digital printer. So that's really brought our business up a lot since we offer the vinyl wraps. That's a big plus for the customer where they can drop the trailer off and we can basically handle all their needs. In, in one trip here. In order to control fleet maintenance cost and ensure reliability, Yadtel has a vehicle service department which maintains 78 vehicles and over a hundred pieces of additional rolling equipment. No matter rain or shine, I mean, we're ready to go. If it's snow, we can fix it and get it back on the road. We don't have a lot of breakdowns. We, we got everything right here ready to go, keep them on the road, keep them going. You're watching YVTV Channel 7, Yakin Valley Local Television. My name is Clint Junker, uh, co-owner of Trailers of the East Coast. And the way I got into the business uh, growing up, I wanted to do anything but the family business. Uh, growing up, we were in the feed, feed mill uh, business. A lot of hard work. I didn't see the hard work as much as I did, just see the fun of being in a feed mill and all the farmers and the, uh, the connections, the different people that would come in. Um, but whenever we got into the trailer business, um, I did whatever we needed to do through junior high and high school. My dad's joke is that, that I'm part-time and I tell him that I'm still looking for something better, but I haven't found it yet. But that, that's been 17 years ago, uh, it's about that first uh, year, year and a half, we looked at building what we still call our new facility, uh, and we've been here 15 years. Uh, uh, we have uh, different departments that each one of us is uh, more drawn to, uh, more interested, but all in all, we just we do whatever it, whatever it takes. Um, so as far as my interest in the company, uh, I do have an interest in technology. Uh, bringing the technology to the business that already knows how to treat people right, do the right thing, provide a great service to the customer, all those things, and then provide that technology part of it, um, I think has been a, it's been a good thing. Uh, and it's not just me, it's others here as well. Um, but, you know, partners like Yadkin Valley um, with our uh, fiber, we just upgraded, they brought fiber to us uh, last year, and that has been a big, tremendous help with them and we enjoy the, the relationship with, that we have with them. Um, but again, with our business, I mean, our bottom line is in anything, and that's the way I am personally at home, is you got to make it easy to do business. And if, if I'm going to spend money with someone, I want to make sure that they appreciate it, but it's also, it's, it's easy. And so that's something that we strive, uh, strive for, it's just the ease of doing business, whether the customer is on the phone. Um, walking in our door, whatever that is, that, that it's just, it's easy. It's easy. So dollars come hard these days, and so we appreciate every one that we get. So we expanded out in front of our facility, which enabled us to get a, a parts showroom. 
So whenever you come in, uh, we used to be able to actually pull trailers inside here, but our parts business has grown so much uh, that now we don't have room for that. Uh, so we have our, our aisles out here and try to keep them displayed. And, and again, uh, along with the theme of being easy to do business is to make sure that we're neat and clean. And that showroom is a representation of everybody here and the products that we serve. So. Um, I don't know. It's a nice open space. We have a lot of people that come here um, that have traveled a long way over the phone or whatever, and they walk in and it, they're they're blown away. Um, of course, you you get comfortable with what you come into day in day out, and so sometimes you don't appreciate it. And so it's good good for people to come in and remind you of of things that you're doing right. We're real proud of where we are, but we're never satisfied with where we are. So we're always striving to to continuously improve and one of the things that uh, that we're moving towards is our, our parts online. We do a tremendous amount of parts uh, business over the phone, shipping out all over the country with our parts department and we're behind as far as getting online and we've got to get that online. Part of the reason why we're behind and sometimes we're behind on other things as well is uh, we want to make sure we do it right and so slow to decide, but once we decide, we're moving forward um, with, with leaps and bounds. So we're looking forward to it. I'll go ahead and say it on, on air right now that uh, we'll have this up and running this year. So I'll go ahead and make a commitment uh, to have that up and running and hopefully that'll be uh, yet another business that we can get into that does not add a lot of overhead. We've got the personnel, we've got the inventory, it's just a matter of getting it out and making it easy for people to, to purchase. And, Something we're extremely proud of is, is our service department and what we've done, especially in the last few years. It was originally when we came out here, even though we had a big facility, uh, the service department was just more just to sell trailers and it wasn't looked upon as a uh, profit center. Um, so the service department was just a necessity is the way we, we viewed it. And uh, fortunately one day we hired a, a service manager that saw things differently and educated us on how your service department can do all these, all those things, but also show a profit for us. So that's, that's been a, a great thing for us. And then a few years ago, we uh, took over next door and uh, last year, which is another service facility, and this past year that we merged the two facilities, which means next door for the last 12, 13 years, they've serviced uh, the NASCAR uh, market, the transporters that you see on uh, Saturday and Sunday on TV. And that customer base, their expectations of getting the work done right and on time is second to none. Um, the option of not getting it done and the option of not being at Daytona or being at Charlotte, it's not an option. And so these guys, whether it takes whatever it takes, overnighting parts, driving somewhere overnight to get parts, um, working all night long, um, no is not an option. Uh, because if we don't get it done, someone else will. So when we merge the two facilities, now all of a sudden you have that um, kind of attitude with their technicians and then the technicians that we had that were working on the horse trailers and, and always did the right thing, but it's just it's taking it to another level of merging these guys. And so now we take care of people. I mean, it's, it's, it's bottom line with our service department. It's second to none. Uh, there's other areas that I would say, and we still can improve in our service department. And there's other areas that we could, um, there might be somebody out there that's doing as well, but as far as in the service department, there's the group of guys that we have that, that do what they do uh, is truly amazing. And part of that, you know, with that attitude and with that know-how, um, we've been getting jobs in the last couple of years that we would have never thought possible. Uh, Five-hour energy drink, we built a hospitality trailer for a marketing company out of Winston-Salem that the five-hour energy drink people used. One of the big things that they needed was uh, they had a deadline. They had to be down in Daytona um, by, by a certain time. And we were able to commit to that and we did whatever it took and still provided a superb um, piece of equipment that they're still using today. Uh, we just finished up a project with uh, Disney. Um, it's a mobile souvenir. Uh, we took a new bread van 
and build uh, vending doors in it to where they can move it to different places within the park and sell, sell their souvenirs. And again, they were dealing with a deadline that others couldn't commit to, and they communicated with us, and we said we could do it. So not only do we have the know-how, which I think is, is easier to find, uh, but we also have the will to make it right and get it right the first time and get it done on time. And I think that's more of the struggle of finding that atmosphere where we can do things like that. Uh, we did a trailer for Sherwin-Williams uh, mobile paint store uh, for disaster relief um, trailer. So they have a, a store that completely gets destroyed in a hurricane, tornado, whatever that is. They can roll this trailer in and they can continue doing business. And it's things like that, our customers educate us. I never thought about that. I never thought about a paint store being down, and yet if it's destroyed in a natural disaster, what more time, uh, there's more of a need then than there is any other time. And so they're able to just step right in and, and keep doing business while that store is being rebuilt. Um, then that's a wonderful thing. So again, we, we did the graphics on that. We did a complete job. Whenever it left out of here, it had all the paint equipment inside of it. Uh, and it was a completed unit. And I think right now it's in uh, New Jersey for the Hurricane Sandy. Yadkin Valley Yellow Pages. If your fingers are walking, or whether they're flying, or you just use your thumbs. Yadtel Publishing is your directory resource for Yellow Pages advertising. We're now in your area selling available ad space for the Yadkin Valley Directory. Reach your customers 24-7, 365 days a year with the Yadkin Valley Yellow Pages. Contact us at 336-463-1800 or online at yadtel.com. We do a broad range of service. Uh, we work on everything from just a little small open landscape trailer to the 53-foot NASCAR trailers that you see every weekend on TV at the tracks where they haul the race cars. Uh, we do air conditioning work, generator work, lights, laminate countertops. Uh, we do custom one-off builds. Uh, we do lift gates. Uh, we do anything from, uh, like I said, a small trailer to just needing a just regular inspection for the state or up to the transporters. Uh, also here at Trails of the East Coast, we do total redesign of trailers. If you brought your trailer in and it doesn't fit your needs anymore, we'll tear it completely out and totally redesign it. Not just trailers, we'll do motorhomes, uh, reconfigure to update to the new systems, HDTV, uh, upholstery and all. My dad used to talk about, uh, you know, a man is no better than the woman he goes home to. Uh, and with that support at night, it is amazing the energy it gives you the next day to uh, accomplish your goals and so forth. I think our sons and our daughter, too, have good work ethics. And, I, and it's because they started young. Um, Maybe they didn't always want to, but part of it was they would, at our business, they would sit there and do work on their homework. They would see what was going on in the day-to-day -day business. And I think that made a big difference too, even if they weren't working. They could see how hard their dad worked, uh, the hours that he put in, the care he had for his employees and, the, and his customers too. He was, it was all about customers. Life is about relationship and it's, it's helping one another and being fair to people. I know people have a tendency that uh, when you go to purchase something that the salesman is, is there to maybe take advantage of you and so forth and uh, that is not our strategy. Uh, uh, we've had salespeople that have worked for us that didn't have the right frame of mind on that and uh, they don't work here any longer. Uh, it's very important to us that what is represented through our company here is 100% correct and everything, will, what they tell you is the way it is. If it isn't, uh, they need to come to the owners and it will be corrected. And I have noticed over the years, you can talk to any CEO or wherever, and, and in their story of their success story, if you will pay attention, 
in that formula, there's always, how did you do it? And in that formula, it's surround yourself with the best people that you can. That's how you do it.